in a city which has endured more than a decade of slaughter, a new dreadful low, one of the worst attacks Baghdad has ever seen. The death toll spiralling towards 200. This, the Islamic State's perverse response to defeating Fallujah, a lorry bomb that vaporised entire families enjoying a night out. <laughs> Today, the bereaved visited the scene of this appalling atrocity, struggling to comprehend the inhumanity of a group that deliberately targets women and children. Zina Mohammed lost several relatives in the blast. May God punish those responsible, she cries. So many people are still under the rubble. And it is the families of the dead who are helping to recover the bodies, or what's left of them. Many are charred beyond all recognition. Now, across Iraq, there is one question. Where's next? In the mostly Shiite Basra, morning markets are nervously surveyed by security forces of a country that continues to disintegrate 13 years after Saddam was toppled. In two days, Sir John Chilcott will give his verdict on that seismic event, but Zainab Ali and her father Hamid have already reached theirs. A US airstrike took her leg, her mother and two brothers. As a young girl, she came to Britain for treatment, but is withering about Britain's attempt to improve Iraq. She says the invasion affected all of Iraq. They attacked us, they changed my life forever and they changed other children's lives. Many other children were injured. Her dad says, I lost my family. They came to occupy for their own interests. They took what they wanted. How did we benefit from them? In a village nearby, the other effects of Western intervention. Despite the millions spent, there's still not even the most basic health care. Here, a British charity fills the void. Iraq used to have a brilliant primary health care system in comparison to the, to the surrounding countries. But after the invasion, the system collapsed. This is the reality for many Iraqis, health care handed out by charities because the country is in such chaos. The hopes of rebuilding Iraq have crumbled away after the invasion. The legacy that Britain left here is difficult to see. But for many Iraqis, the real legacy of the invasion is found at funerals like this one in Najaf, where yesterday's victims are being laid to rest. Victims who are part of the same tangled thread that started with the toppling of a dictator and ended with the rise of ISIS, a fractured country reeling from 13 years of unintended consequences. Dan Rivers, News at 10, Iraq.